Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Now if you're one of my regulars you're probably wondering what's with the clickbaity title because it's not the sort of thing I usually do. And if you've tuned in because of the clickbaity title you're probably going to want to scrub forward to about two or three minutes before the end uh, and the rest of the video will probably be of no interest to you. What I'm going to be doing is taking you out on a quick trip up to a little valley in the Avionith range of mountains in Snowdonia called Cumpenant uh, and uh, an update on my RPS project that uh, is still ongoing. Uh, then we're going to be heading down to the beach at the Church in the Sea where I'm going to be attempting something that I normally wouldn't bother with. Anyway, let's get on with it and start out on that lovely little Snowdonia walk up in Cumpenant. One thing that's become very apparent on my short walk today is the scope for my RPS project just at the head of this valley, all within a couple of miles walk of a very quiet parking spot. I'm right up at Blind Pennant, at the head of the Cumpenant Valley. This little derelict cottage here has really caught my eye. Now I spent some time on the walk up to the uh, Bulchuzu look across to Snowdon right at the top there and it's only a short walk today and I've really enjoyed myself but what I've been doing along the way is scoping out some shots and even though I should have been home an hour ago I'm going to be in so much trouble with the lovely Mrs G. This cottage has taken up far too much of my time. I've been here for about half an hour trying all sorts of things. Now what I particularly want to be able to do with this is to represent it in its location. The backdrop of the mountains behind uh, that's the Nantla Ridge over there uh, and what I want to do is to put this fabulous little building in that context. The problem is very apparent, it's the middle of summer and it's just not going to work. There are two huge sycamore trees growing out of uh, what would have been the front wall of this house. Uh, there's some ash trees growing out further back there. Now the problem is because they're in full leaf I've got no views through at all to the background. What I've done here is taken a uh, five shot panorama which kind of starts looking across the valley and swings round and takes in this little bit of wall here just behind me. Uh, really as much for a reference as anything I certainly don't expect to be using it as part of my submission but I thought since I'm here let's have a go at it. When I walked up it was very cloudy, very grey cloud base was just skirting the tops of the surrounding peak so only about 650 700 meters but it's lifted and cleared up and I've got a bit of light although it's still a bit early I've just uh, I've had this valley on my radar for quite some time for this project and uh, I've obviously walked here before but not with this in mind and it hadn't occurred to me the extent of the uh, derelict industrial workings here. There's an old disused reservoir uh, and all sorts of levels up to the bulk as you go over to uh, Beth Gellert Forest and over to Ridley. But uh, I, uh, yeah, I really need to pack up and get home or I'm gonna, gonna be in so much trouble.
I've had a lot of inquiries over the last few months as to how the RPS project is going and I'm still very much enjoying working on it. But that location in particular has convinced me that this is not going to be a quick project. My submission probably won't be till well into next year. Because what I'm going to do is return to that location and some of the others that I've already taken you to throughout the different seasons, in particular in winter. So I'm hopeful that round about December, January time I'll be out getting some more images. I've currently got probably six or seven that I'm happy with uh, and if people are interested I'll put a video together just talking you through my thoughts on where I'm at so far perhaps. Anyway let's move forward to the next bit of uh, on location stuff where I go down to the church in the sea. Now the church in the sea can be a really tough uh, location to get a decent image and I've lost count of the number of times people have asked me about it and I've said look you really want to be there at high tide and in particular a high spring tide because that's when it's really at its best as you can see from this image here which is from a, a similar time of year a few years ago uh, and uh, this one which you're probably familiar with if you followed my work at all over the last few years. But a few days ago we had such a lovely evening that I just really wanted to get out with a camera but I didn't have much time on my hands. I checked the tide tables and it was going to be a low spring tide and I thought well why not challenge myself to see if I can do anything with it. So let's go and take a look at how I got on. So unusually for me, and as opposed to what we were up to last week, just along the coast, tonight I've actually got something in mind. And what I thought I'd do is challenge myself to get a half decent picture at low water. As you can see, the problem with this particular location, which I haven't been back to since I was here with Mark McNeil about uh, four or five months ago, the arse end of winter. Uh, but at low tide, all you've got is this moonscape and it's really not very attractive. Now the light is lovely, although the foreground light will disappear quite shortly, so I'll need to hustle a little bit to get organised. Uh, but I thought I'd challenge myself to see if I can get a half decent shot. So what I thought I'd do, lots of little rock pools around here, uh, and I'm going to use a rock pool, don't know which one yet, uh, and shoot really wide angles so that I'm featuring the wildlife in the rock pool as my foreground. The mid-ground will be a, a thin strip of tedious rock and then of course the church. Now because I'm going to shoot really wide angle it's going to minimise the impact of the church and what that means is that my main subject is potentially going to be a bit lost but I've got a trick that I'll probably deploy in post and I'll show you what I do with that just to give it a bit more oomph in the final edit. So I got myself set up shooting at 10 millimeters and right there in front of the camera is the bottom of my frame. So this wide angle shot is about the only thing that I can find that creates any sort of a decent image down here at low water where I've got all this sort of moon rock between me and the church. Now I'm using this rock pool to its best effect because inside the rock pool there's lots of really interesting colours, there's loads of winkles and limpets kicking around there so lots of interest in the foreground and midground. The area of rock, the band of rock that's going to be around about two-thirds of the way up the image is what I'm going to use to blend my focus stack so I'm focusing in the rock pool and then also focusing on the church. Now the sun is going to disappear behind the headland at this sort of level 
in the next sort of 10 minutes or so. So I've got a whole series of shots on the card of this foreground. Uh, and what I'm going to do now, because uh, I've shot that polarised, uh, I'm going to take my filters off because I'm shooting really wide. The polarizer will create lots of dark and light areas in the exposure and I don't really need it because I'm going to expose for the church anyway. Now the flank of the church that's facing the sun is really bright so I need to make sure I don't clip that uh, but on the whole not a hugely difficult exposure. Uh, I'm using f6.3 full frame equivalent of about f13 and that will get me the sharpness that I'm after. But this is an important uh, consideration in an image like this. You really want your close foreground nice and sharp and then the church which to all intents and purposes is around about infinity also needs to be sharp. Um, but the advantage I've got even though I'm going to lose the light in the foreground because I'm all set up I can wait it out until the light on the church is a little more golden. As you can see, the light in the foreground is completely gone now, and yet there's still a long time to go till sunset. But also the light on the church is softening and getting more golden, which is what I was after. So now's the time to start taking those shots. And even the rocks around the base of the retaining wall are now dropping into shadow. So it really won't be long. Um, but I am also hopeful of a hint of colour in the sky because I can see some appearing uh, over on the horizon out to sea at about 90 degrees to the sun. So there's still a chance of a little bit of colour but I think that the exposures that I'm taking round about now for the church are probably as good as it's going to get. Well, I'm all done for this evening. I've got all of the exposures that I planned on when I set out this evening um, and also got a bit of colour in the sky about half an hour after sunset. So I've got a couple of exposures that I'm just going to use for the sky. Um, so what I thought I'd do is show you how I'm going to put this all together. Um, not a detailed walkthrough, but just an, an indication of how I approach this sort of thing. Now here we are in Photoshop and I've got the four exposures which are going to be the components of the final image open as layers. I've aligned them and you'll see that I've actually created manual masks for these four layers. The reason I'm using manual masks of course rather than the standard Photoshop focus stack module is that they're not just a focus stack but they're also uh, an exposure blend and a, a time blend because they were taken over quite a long period of time. So my standard setup when I'm photographing and as you saw is that I tend to start shooting at the, at the nearest focal point and move away from myself. It's just my habit. You don't have to do it like that. But I also do that when I'm processing. Let me show you. I'm going to hide these other layers and you'll see that this layer at the top here was the first of the uh, images that I took or the earliest of the images that I took. And this one you'll see is only used for this very bottom part of the image. The next image then is my mid ground. So you can see I've only got the sky uh, masked out for this particular one. Uh, and then what I have is the island and the church and the sky. I'm going to select these two layers because combined those are where I've done a bit of cheating. If I put on the transform tool, command T or control T, you'll see that the bounds of this control are way outside the canvas of the image. And what that tells you is that this is bigger than how it was shot. And if I drag this corner, you will see that I've actually extended the size of the church just a little bit to give it more prominence in the final composition. Let me show you by comparing it with one of the exposures which has been completely unaffected. This is a raw file and 
you'll see the church is pretty small. And when I show you how I've blended it there, it's much more prominent. Now, of course, you could argue, but that's cheating. Well, I suppose it is. But wouldn't it also be cheating if there was a rock pool a bit nearer the church and I just walked forward and had the church more prominent? But there aren't any. What I'm doing here is I'm expanding on quite a standard uh, technique that landscape photographers will use. And what that is, is where you have a really wide angle lens, you put an item like, well, an item, you put something like a mountain right at the edge of your frame and the natural distortion of the wide angle lens expands that slightly. I'm taking it to a, a greater degree by doing this, but I'm not going bonkers. If I was to expand it like this so that it was absolutely huge and then drag it by, back down and attach it and you'll see there that mid ground that I mentioned in the video on location is where the, you can blend it quite seamlessly because there's no solid lines or anything that makes it obvious. If I hadn't told you about this, you'd be none the wiser. So I'm going to call it legitimate. Um, and if I was feeling particularly coy about it, I wouldn't be making this video, would I? But what it does allow you to do is to avoid a situation where your primary subject because of the constraints of the location is a little bit lost in the background. You can do something to make it a little bit more prominent. I hope you'll feel in the final image that I'm going to share with you shortly. Um, I've got away with it, but you know, let me know what you think in the comments. So on that bombshell, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe and join me next time? Cheers. <laughs>